Hi, everyone. On Tuesday morning, October 13th, I received the heartbreaking news that Tracy Forrest had flown west. Needless to say, the entire aviation community was and still is in shock. After all, Tracy was a passionate aviator who had an ATP rating just because, who built literally from the ground up a successful construction business, who was a founding member of the Citation Jet Pilots Association, as well as a co-founder of the Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation. He was a generous philanthropist and a great humanitarian who supported a lot of causes, particularly those that were aviation related. And even more so when influencing the aviation career paths of aspiring young aviators. You know, that dovetailed perfectly with his friendship with R.A. Bob Hoover, who was always about inspiring the next generation of aviation leaders. There is so much to be said about Tracy and given our current circumstances, the best way to do so is with this virtual fireside chat that took place on Friday, October 16th. You will hear from some of Tracy's closest friends and admirers, including such aviation legends as Tom Poboresny, Bob Wilson, and Clay Lacey, to name a few. Heck, we probably could have done a two hour show with the likes of aviators like Fred Telling, Bob Showwater, and Terry Poyi. Most importantly though, before we get started, I would be remiss not to acknowledge Ray. Simply put, Ray was Tracy's center of gravity. And along with Lisa Harris, his executive assistant, they always managed to keep Tracy on course. Well, it's time for departure from the Southeast ramp of Orlando Sanford International Airport, runway 27 right, cleared for takeoff, Call sign, nice. Hello everyone, welcome to a special edition of All Things Aviation. Uh, today we're going to do a tribute to Tracy Forrest. And it is my honor uh, and I consider it a privilege to have some of Tracy's longtime friends, colleagues uh, on this fireside chat, this virtual fireside chat. And without, uh, any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the chairman of the Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation, Mike Herman. Mike? Thanks, uh, uh, Vince. Um, what I want to say to everybody uh, is we all know that he, uh, as opposed to his normal appearance in public, he was a very private person. And in, in keeping with that, um, I, I would just like to say this. Uh, I've seen the real Tracy Forrest. I've seen him do things for folks that folks do not see. He never talks about it. He never brings it up. Um, I've watched him uh, on a one-to-one -one basis with other people and how he listens, how he cares. And uh, personally with me uh, and the things that we have tried to do, not always successfully all the time, but that we have tried to do, uh, in particular to fulfill uh, Bob Hoover's wishes, um, he, he was a very, very caring guy, and a lot of people didn't didn't get to see that that side of him. Uh, and so I feel like I was very privileged to be able to know the real Tracy, the things he did for folks, whether it was during the holiday times or other times. He was always there, and he always very quietly, in private, did what he did and the way he did it. And um, and for that, uh, he's one of the nicest human beings I've ever known. One thing for sure is Tracy would be enjoying this right now, seeing everybody, all of his friends get together. That was one of his favorite things to do was to pull friends together and catch up and chat and, uh, and, and fly. Well, I'm sure he's watching. Uh, so I'm going to let some of the other folks uh, get their piece in. Uh, I just wanted to get that point across that uh, he touched us all everywhere and nobody ever else knew about it. Is that was Tracy. That was really the private Tracy. I think that's a good time Hi, to uh, turn it over to Cyrus. Hi, Ed. Welcome, Ed. Mark, Chick. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Good Cyrus, see you, you want to share some of your thoughts about Tracy? You've known him a long time. Yeah, I know. I, I prepare some thoughts and 
just starting to listen to Mike talk, like my heart kind of race, started to race, just thinking about Tracy in the context that we've all known him. And uh, Tracy was one of the most important people in my, my life. Um, he was, has been, and will continue to be an incredible mentor for me. I, you know, I would argue that the company that I, I co-founded, Jet Aviva, probably wouldn't have ever really happened if it wasn't for Tracy. Um, Tracy kind of took me underneath his very big wing Pulled, pulled me over uh, about 11, 12 years ago and, um, and started to teach me what it means to um, bring people together and build community and, and watch and get the joy from the joy of others. And I've never met anyone that was so gracious with their time, with their resources, with their friends. The number of times something would just show up in the mail from Tracy that was... I don't know how he thought about it, but he's like, hey, I think this, you'd enjoy this. And, you know, kind of have to like go, who does this? And not a lot of people do that. And Tracy did it. And um, so I, to have him as a mentor and, and really one of my best friends um, for the last decade plus has been one of the highlights of my life. And um, I, I can't be more grateful. And many of you I met because of Tracy. And it was Tracy that was really the... Um, the horsepower amongst a few other folks around CJP, which is a community that has had a huge impact on me personally and thousands of individuals. And frankly, it's why I met Bob. It's probably why I met Mike, Mark. I mean, all you guys, it's because of Tracy I met you. Um, Cheryl, Vince. Um, and you know, I, I don't think we're gifted with that many people that are able to uh, have a little drop of their effort create such incredible waves of impact for, for a community. And, um, and I, I, as I go forward in my life, as, a, um, as somebody looked up to him, not only as a friend, but as a mentor, I'm really excited to be able to just take a few of his lessons and, and, and hopefully have them impart going forward. Um, but a couple of things that stood out thinking about Tracy is the man was a four-year-old child stuck in a 70-year-old man's body. <laughs> and, and holy crap, I mean, it, you could, it couldn't be more playful soul. And one of my all-time favorite quotes is, um, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. And while Mother Time may have had its uh, impact on Tracy, uh, it had no impact on, on the physicality of Tracy, it had no impact on the man's spirit, uh, all the way to um, the moment we, you know, all of us had the chance to say our last words with him. Um, and the last words I said to him is, I love you. <sighs> and he said that back. And Good I, on you. And, um, but that being said, um, a few, a few meaningful things. I, uh, I get to go hop in an airplane and go fly right now. And Tracy's going to be my co-pilot when I go do that. And I'm really excited to go spend time with him up there where he is now. <clears throat> I'm sure going to make it tough on the rest of us. I'm crying right now. Oh my God. Oh. Gee, yeah. cut it out, buddy. We, we all have boxes of tissue, thanks to yeah. you, Cyrus. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, man, but I'm, I'm a, I'm a crybaby. <laughs> boo -hoo was my call sign in high school. They used to say he used to cry a lot, so they, they call me Boo. -hoo. But... Um, just uh, something that just shows an indication of how much love this man has for him and for Ray, who's been just such an incredible um, human that we've all gotten to know because of Tracy and really none of this would have happened without Ray as well. And, uh, and I hope she's able to um, enjoy and celebrate this incredible human being that she got to have a partnership with for so long. But, you know, having been close friends with him, have had a lot of friends reach out and say, hey, Cyrus, Tracy has had a huge impact on me. How do I help? What do I do? What's the right way to kind of get going and, you know, celebrating his life going forward? And I am, um, you know, with a, a, the help of a few other folks, we, you know, had a conversation with Ray earlier today around, hey, Ray, what would you like us to do? Um, and between myself, Ed Turley, another friend, John Callahan, she said, hey, I'd like for you guys to kind of aggregate and put, put people together and, and try to come up with a a place where anything that's raised in his name, you know, can be done in a really thoughtful way. And I am so humbled 
to be a part of sharing that within two, three hours, we've had half a million dollars committed to support um, whatever Tracy wants, his soul wants to support going forward. And for any of our friends that are watching this that have known Tracy and that are interested in supporting whatever it is we go forward and doing in Tracy's name, um, you can email me at CS, Charlie Sierra, at jetaviva.com. That's CS at jetaviva.com. Um, and, you know, I'm sure Ray, Tracy, and all those that downstream get to benefit from uh, your generosity and helping celebrate Tracy uh, would be um, very much uh, appreciated. So I don't want to hog up all the time here, but thank you, Vince, and the rest of the team for, for joining on here for us to celebrate uh, uh, one of the most special guys that's ever walked this planet. And um, with that, I'd like to pass it over to our good friend, Bob Wilson, who uh, um, we met through Tracy. So over to you, Bob. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Uh, you two guys are hard to follow, but uh, I'll add a little bit to it. Uh, I probably have known Tracy longer than anybody here, especially in his aviation career. As Tracy came to work down in 1982 for my father, worked as a plumber, if you can believe that. But he had such a great work ethic. He came to my father and said, look, I'd like to sub out all of the uh, villas, you know, to build the villas for you at Orange Lake Country Club down there our timeshare at Orlando. Uh, this is where we really got together and I got to know Tracy there. We were in a meeting. By the way, uh, one other thing that was interesting is uh, Ray was my dad's secretary. And that's how Tracy met Ray. Was it? The small world of aviation. <laughs> I did yeah. not know that one. I yeah. did not either. I did not. <laughs> so we uh, were sitting there, you know, really having a, a talk one day. Tracy said, I got to leave. Mike. And we said, what do you mean you got to leave? He said, I've got to go to my boat over in, uh, oh, that in the Bahamas. And I said, uh, Tracy, well, what, what, how are you going to get there? He said, I got to catch an airline. I, basically told him, I said, look, you're crazy. You need to learn how to fly. And he said, oh, that's for somebody else, not me. Tracy had a captain's license for maritime and did a lot on about a 59 foot uh, sailboat, I believe he had. So about two weeks later, three weeks later, I get a call from Tracy he says, what the hell do I have to do to learn how to fly? And so I laid, <laughs> out, I laid out a deal and said, uh, one thing you got to do, you're not going to want to do, is you got to fly every day and just let your brother Jeff run the company. And he said, can't do that. I said, well, you're probably not going to learn how to fly then. So finally, he bit the bullet and uh, went, got his license, uh, took, some, took the time off to do it. I got his license. The next thing I know, hell, he's bought a damn Piper. And I said, so you got a Piper. Well, he got in the old Piper uh, program where they would trade up. You could, you wanted to trade from a, whatever the Warrior, the Saratoga, and on up. So next thing I knew, he had, he had, he had already traded up. And of course, Tracy loved gadgets, as everybody knows. Everything electronic was Tracy. He had more craft than they, those damn airplanes. And uh, I asked him, what's your useful load? He said, what's that? <laughs> so someday you got to start thinking about it, Tracy, because you're going to haul anybody. Next, I uh, find out he's got a TBM 700. So he calls me and he says, we're going to pick you up in the TBM 700. And okay, I'd never been in one before. You know, he landed in his. And the way I describe it is it had that comedian paint job. Sucker changes colors every time it goes by you. And we took off. We had a French guy that was flying flying with him at that time. We go up to Jackson, Mississippi, excuse me, Jackson, Tennessee. And we're coming in there and, you know, we call in. Uh, French, uh, the French guys called the Cicada. And the tower said, what's a Cicada? I don't know what it is. And so he's trying to explain it. And of course, I smarted off and said, it's a baby platypus. And this guy about got 
bent out of shape. <laughs> Tracy left. Back seat. They love that. The, uh, the tower operator, she, she ended up and said, uh, well, what's so dang funny about it? I said, well, just tell me what color we are when we go by. So I shot a touch and go. And now she, back, she calls back and she said, or I called her and I, she said, I don't know, but I saw three when you went by. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> now from that, you know, I go where they had the NBAA down in Orlando, uh, probably back in 96 or so. And he comes over to me and he says, if I buy, if I will buy a Mustang position, uh, he'll buy a Mustang position. I said, Tracy, I don't need a Mustang. Marty got a CJ. He says, you need to buy one, and then I'll buy one, but you'll make me do it. I said, all right. We bought a position, never expecting to, you know, to close on it or anything. And then, of course, he goes for, like, number 13 or so. And I'm the other end of the stream. I wanted to be a lot later and let them, you know, fly the aircraft out and do it. So, you know, just – uh Friendship with Tracy and Ray been just unbelievable. Uh, we yeah. had, uh, he did one thing that was, I think, really nice. And uh, Mark, Mike Herman's on here. And uh, that is, is, I think, between Tracy and uh, Mike, they got me honored with the San Diego Air <laughs> It was absolutely a fantastic deal for me. Uh, I think he was proud of it. Just, you know, it really worked out nifty. Uh, That's awesome. You know, uh, the tough thing, uh, you know, it, it's hard to end up, but I uh, I got a call from Ray about Tracy, uh, and he was diagnosed on my birthday, August 17th, mm -hmm. uh, which was, man, that really became a sad day for me. Uh, but fortunately, uh, I flew in to see him, you know, first weekend, week of September. And I uh, just told Ray, I said, you tell me when I can come and I'll be there. So we ended up flying in. Uh, yeah, like I, I, we, kept, we pulled up this, you know, after, uh, his hangar, which is absolutely, yeah. there's no hangar that compares to his hangar. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you're missing it. The most unbelievable no. place Fine. ever go. And uh, so Tracy is sitting in a, in a car and we go over, we talk, and, uh, you know, basically he was, uh, you know, he had everything up top. He, you know, he was, you know, current with everything. He was just kind of struggling with his right side due to the, the tumor that was on the left side that had been operated on. But we had absolutely a fantastic time. Went to his famous German restaurant that he loved to eat at mm. down there and eat. He finished his plate. I, I'm not the biggest German fan of how you eat, but uh, but it was more fun. And then he took me down to sh show me his new houseboat that he had just finished. And I think this was like probably uh, less than six months prior. But oh, uh, wow. it, it was, you know, for me, it was so special to spend some time with him. We talked about going into a research project that they were going to do, you know, with his uh, uh, cancer that he had. Uh, I heard uh, uh, from Ray that it was called a wild cancer, and I'd never heard the term wild. Uh, so doing that, I called my brother-in-law, who's an oncologist, and he said, really, that's a definition of cancer that's super fast growing, and they really don't know how to handle it. It was, it was tough for me to see Tracy in that position, but uh, I was able, you know, we sat and we talked, uh, you know, really just had a good time. And, and you know, he's really going to be missed by me. And uh, I wrote a little note to Ray and I said, you know, Tracy's now flying out of, you know, in the clear above all the clouds. He won't have to worry about flying another IFR flight. Yeah. But just probably one of the greatest people that uh, you'll ever meet. And, uh, you know, 
he's done so much for aviation it's hard to hard to imagine but that's my kind of story well, with him you. on yeah. the super guys and i'll turn well it over said, bob. To mark. Well, well said. said. Thank you, Bob, for, for sharing that. I also want to welcome Tom Poporezny and Clay Lacey, who have joined the call. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Hi, hi Clay. Hey, guys. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, chat with Mark uh, Delude, uh, who had some uh, stories and things he wanted to share, too. Bob, thank you. Yeah. You know, it's really striking to me to hear everybody's thoughts on Tracy because he was such a consistent guy, just, you know, genuine, just as you know, charming guy, <laughs> bit of a, at times he could be almost a curmudgeon, but just everybody, how consistent it was. And Bob's story of, of recounting these progression of airplanes was making me think, I've had a lot of people follow me in my various airplanes, but it's actually me that's been following Tracy this whole time. I met Tracy when I had a TBM, when he had a TBM, he bought a Mustang, I bought a Mustang, he bought an M2, I bought an M2, he bought a CJ3+, plus. I bought a CJ3+. plus. I kept waiting to see what Tracy was going to buy next because pretty clearly I was going to buy whatever the heck he was going and buying. And it was just, you know, every time he had an airplane, he would just be so uh, positive about it and just talking about how great all of it was. Always so positive and upbeat and so on. And, and yet he had that childlike, you know, side of it that Cyrus mentioned as well, you know, the four-year-old in a 70-year-old body. And I remember on either the TBM or the Mustang that he had this little placard as soon as you came in the airplane. And it said, if you're not living beyond your means, you're not using your imagination. And it, it just really described him as a, I just want to live every single moment that I possibly can you know, do everything that uh, my time on this planet is going to let me do. Just a love, a love of life and sharing it with people too. If I look at all the names here on this screen, these are like aviation giants to me. And I met these people, a lot of it through Tracy, met Bob Hoover through Tracy. Unbelievable guy, you know, just for every single step. But that's not to say for one second that he couldn't be a hard ass too, because you, you know, you couldn't say no to Tracy. He called me up at one point. I had bought my Mustang. I joined CJP. And he calls me up. He says, Mark, we've got a problem. You, you're familiar with this high tech stuff. I need you to come out and tell me if we're on the right path or what we should do. So I went and I did that because you can't say no to Tracy. And, you know, I flew out to Spokane, Washington to look at what well, I live on the East Coast because Tracy told me that I had to go and do this. So I go and I take a look and I give him a whole report on everything that needs to be done. And he goes, okay, so you're gonna join us and you're gonna do all of this, right? And I'm saying, well, like, why would I do that? In my mind, I'm thinking, why would I do that? But my mouth was saying, yeah, I'd love to, Tracy. I'm just, of course I, I will do that. He just had this way. You just wanted to be around him. You just, you couldn't tell him no, and even if you tried, he didn't hear the word no ever. It was just for him, it was, oh, I don't know what that meant, but okay, let's get back to the real thing here of what I want you to do. He was such an extraordinary guy, and um, you know, kind of like every step, this childish aspect of it as well, you know, Vince is standing there in front of his airplane that got that call sign, and just before, this call went live for everybody. It reminded me is Tracy worked forever to get that short tail number, you know, that looks like the word nice. And I think within minutes of him getting it and having the schematic of it, he texted me this picture and he was just overjoyed like a, like a kid would be at Christmas that he had just gotten this toy that he had wanted, you know, he'd been asking his parents for uh, just, you know, nobody has lived their life more fully than Tracy. And it's just a fantastic guy. I'm glad I knew him. That, that is so well said, Mark. And, you know, as you talk about CJP, the Citation Jet Pilots Association, that's kind of appropriate to let Cheryl chime in here, talking about citations and, and the association. And Cheryl, you've known, you knew Tracy for a long time. Yeah, it, indeed. And to chime in on, on what Mark's telling you and what 
Cyrus has said and what Michael has said. So I remember those conversations with Mark because Tracy said to me one day, um, uh, you know, this Mark DeLude, I've got to get him involved. I remember I was on the front end of all those conversations. And then he got, he got Mark reeled in. Started getting me. Then I remember the conversation down in the kitchen one day when you were here at the ramp. And he said, Cheryl, come, come down here, come down here. So I come down and, and we're chatting in the kitchen and Mark's coming on board to do this. It was as emphatic, you were gonna do it. And you were just standing there going, okay. <laughs> and he, he pulled me in. And as you know, no. I ended up being pretty involved with CJP. So yeah. Yes, absolutely. So on, on, on Tracy's generosity front, Michael, I'll touch on what you said because Tracy did me exactly the way you had described, which was remarkable. So um, I was, um, my husband and I have flown for years. And so we were um, in the aviation industry for quite some time. And um, we were at all the major aviation events for years and years and years and years. We came uh, to know Tracy. We came to know Tracy here because we did flight training on the field here. And so we were at a lot of events. So Tracy had invited us to one of his MBA events um, many years ago. And then from that point on, and um, at one MBA event at his hangar, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, come here, I need you, I need you, I need you. So when Tracy taps you on the shoulder and says, I need you, you just turn and you go, right? You don't oh. ask questions. You just, yeah, you're just, you just go. So I did. And um, he turned around, turned me around uh, in the hallway in front of the um, workshop downstairs. And he said, okay, look up there. And I, I looked up, I'm looking up the stairway. I had never been up there. And he said, that is your new office. And I looked at him and I said, you know, what do you mean? And he said, well, that's your new office for your business. And CJP is going to look with you up there. I said, okay. And I'm turned around. I look again and he was gone, gone. So Michael, what you're saying is, is exactly true. You don't even, you're lucky if you get to say thank you because he drops those, those beautiful blossoms on you and then turns and, and he's just happy to be able to do something like that for somebody, right? So from that point on, and, and my story starts before that because many years I had, my path had crossed traces at aviation events. And so we knew each other, but we didn't know each other well. I mean, we just you know, knew each other because we were always at, at events. So we maybe chat lightly here and there. And one day he actually asked me what I did for a living. And so we had a very nice conversation. He said, well, you know, this is what I do. I'm in the association management business. Um, we managed like nine associations at that time and so on and so forth. And um, he said, all he said was, I've got some people you need to talk to. And this was back in 2010, I think. So um, the next week he had me on the phone with our, the CJP board of directors at that time. And then uh, some of them flew out here to Florida and all of a sudden we were having meetings and we were talking and chatting and I thought, well, you know, it's a startup organization, which I would consider a startup in, in 2010 because they were founded in 2008 and 2009 was really their first year. So they were in their infancy. So we had some really great dialogue and by the getting into the conversation, um, they were intrigued because they were talking about the organization and then I was telling them what their problems were and they were looking at me going, oh my gosh, that's exactly the problem we're having. How do we fix it? And that's what I do for a living, right? So um, that's how I came on board. And before you know it, um, they, they brought me on uh, part-time and said, you know, we just, we need you to start, you know, looking at things and getting things organized. And um, we need the accounting taken away from here and, and we need to do this and so on and so forth. So um, it wasn't but uh, literally a few months later before they asked me to go full-time and then the next year they asked me to drop my client load and um, uh, concentrate on the efforts of CJP. So I'm very fortunate. I've met so many great people. CJP uh, guys and ladies are just absolutely phenomenal. So the other side of that coin is, is the prankster side of Tracy. So there you go. I was going to ask you what a Tracyism <laughs> would be. <laughs> yes. So Tracy found me an easy mark because as I said, whenever he said, come, come here, I need you. You just go, right? So you just, he just lead you right into, to the fire, so to speak. So one day um, I was in the kitchen downstairs and uh, having a conversation with one of his guests. And then he calls me out the, the door into the hangar 
And um, he was standing there with this contraption in his hands and I'm going, okay, what? And his Jeep is literally parked eight feet from us to the left, right? The nose of the Jeep. The tail of his M2 is just overhead. I mean, we just were right in there. And all of a sudden he lights up this flamethrower and it shoots a flame over the hood of the Jeep, under the tail of the M2. I'm terrified because I'm thinking, oh my God, we're going to blow up. But he's got this flamethrower that I, if you all see him at Oshkosh, he loves to play with, right? He's got it downstairs. It's on a little stand from Elon Musk. So he was showing off, but he was going to really scare the heck out of me. And he but, sure but, did. <laughs> there's a picture of him roasting marshmallows with that, yes. with Ray. There you go. There you go. I mean, with the flamethrower. Like, my bangs and my eye, eyelashes and eyebrows were singed, you know, it's one of those moments. It was crazy. But oh, he just thought that was hysterical. He just loved it. Absolutely thought that was hysterical. Hey, we've but, had a few people on that I want to give a chance, especially please. Clay and Tom. Clay Lacey, how are you? Good. Good. Clay, you want to share some uh, some of your memories of Tracy? Well, uh, yes, I'd like to say a few things about Tracy, but I, I, I didn't know Tracy very long. Uh, I don't remember when we met, but uh, probably not over six years ago. Uh, I think maybe through Bob Hoover, I'm not, I'm not sure. But anyway, I had the privilege of when I was down at NBA in Florida, uh, <laughs> being invited down to his hangar and his get together, which is just great. But my impression of uh, Tracy was he loved aviation and uh, he, uh, you know, he, as you know, he, we were talking, you've been talking about he moved from one airplane to another in a big hurry and uh, kept moving his way up in aviation, but also. He uh, uh, loved loved aviation, loved people in aviation, and uh, he he did a lot for for us in aviation, uh, uh, making us look good, let's say, and having fun. And uh, but he was a very great guy. It, 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 can't remember him ever talking bad about anyone, you know, running people, other people down. And um, he'd fly his airplane out here to California on different occasions, several times. And I had the opportunity to get together with him. He was just a great guy. And um, so uh, he was certainly going to be missed and by all of you and me, all of his friends, really missed. That aviation is going to miss him. Uh, and life will miss him. Uh, he was a positive person. Yeah. Thank you very much, Clay. We, we, uh, we all couldn't agree with you more on that. Tom, you've been waiting patiently. Um, we'd love to hear what you have to say about your friendship with with uh, Tracy and and all the things he did with you with the uh, EAA. Thanks, Spence. I appreciate it. I'm here with my wife, Sharon, and my daughter, Leslie. And we want to remember Tracy because he is an important part of our lives and your lives. He didn't just love airplanes. He loved people. He loved to do things for people no matter what it was. But he's also a guy that liked to have fun. And at Oshkosh, I can remember the, the sofa that he had that he motorized and drove around the grounds. Uh, the, well, the, the flamingos that he had at his campsite and his outreach. There's nobody that he wouldn't talk to that, that loved airplanes. He, he, for me, I could tell stories like we all can that will create memories that will last a lifetime. But most importantly is the relationship that we had and the friendship. He, he made you feel important, whether he knew you for one day, one year, or whatever the case may be. He was active, led by his example. And he's by example today, look at all the people on the phone here that are ready to tell stories about Tracy Forrest. I was shocked when I heard about his having cancer and finally passing away. Um, it's, it goes to show how fragile life is, but also 
in life, we make relationships that become very important, help to shape our personalities and what we do. Uh, it, it, um, I'm almost at a loss for words, which is pretty unusual for me, but. Uh. <laughs> Tom, what's one of your fondest memories of Tracy? I think one of my fondest memories of Tracy was at the um, CGP conventions. He was always working behind the scenes, never looking for credit, but always getting things done with everybody in the leadership role. Uh, he is an important part of CGP, he's an important part of aviation, and he, he, he loved to fly. When I was with him in the airplane, we'd fly different places. You could just see by his natural ability how important that was. But what was also important is the fact is that he cares. And when you meet people like that, it, it tugs you at your heart. He, he, he was a tremendous loss, but his memory will carry on forever. And I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all today to share briefly how important Tracy is to me because the emotion that I feel in my personal, in my body right now, is hard to, to, to push out of me. But I want you to know that I, I think this is wonderful that you guys are doing this to put this together because he has earned this opportunity to be re remembered one more time as he's gone west. Thanks, Vince. Sure, thank you, Tom. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it's um, it, it's tough these days, and and you have to do everything virtually. But it is also great to be able to bring everybody together for this. So I, I want to shift a little bit about something with Tracy that I always admired about him. So I met him about 12 years ago when I worked for AOPA's Air Safety Foundation, and the when I first met <coughs> Tracy and sat down and talked with him, the very first thing I learned about him was that he was um, extremely passionate about advoc advocating for aviation, for general aviation, and, and very knowledgeable about it, which is, is, is going to bring me to Mark Baker and Ed Bolin. I mean, there wasn't anything that Tracy wasn't on top of with regard to uh, the needs of, of keeping general aviation safe and alive and, and thriving and that type of thing. And, and with that, I'm just going to give it to either Ed or Mark, and you guys take it away. I'll, I'll take a shot at that. Thanks, Vince, and thanks all. Nice to see you and so many people that I haven't seen this year, the season of non, non fly ins. And uh, but then when I look at that end number, there's probably nobody happier than that end number other than Tracy than me, because I travel all over the country. And every time I'd see a, a Tango Fox on the ramp with a funny paint scheme, I'd say, Where are you? Well, I sold that airplane. And then you go on and on and on and on. I could never find out which airplane he was actually in because the train door was so fast. I just quit calling. But <laughs> he was uh, sensational about that, and I and I think his hangar there. I get to see a lot of hangars all over the country and the world, and that toy box wins. And his ability to share that toy box is all about who Tracy was that I know. And some of us here, like Bob and I and Mike and others, got to spend a fair amount of time with him. And some of us even went on the Ronald Reagan together a dozen or so years ago. Uh, spending time with him was always a hoot, always fun, but he always chose to share passion for aviation and share his heart, share his home, what I consider his home, the hangar. And uh, thank you so much, Tracy, for sharing yourself. God bless. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Ed? Yeah, I. Uh, it's just everybody is telling stories and they all bring Tracy to life because uh, he lived so large, I think, for all of us. I had a, uh, a chance to get to meet Tracy when he was the head of the TBM owners and pilots association and uh, was thoroughly impressed with everything that he accomplished. And then uh, the next thing I know, he's buying a Mustang and talking about starting a brand new uh, owner operator group. And uh, what really impressed me is he had done that once and he created something really special. And here he was with the new airplane ready to do it all over again. And he did. And I think anyone who knows uh, or has been in any way associated with CJP uh, recognizes that he has done something really special and brought so many people and lives together through both of those uh, organizations, but also because uh, he brought people together. Uh, he, and, and people have talked about NBAA. Uh, you can't go to NBA in Orlando without celebrating um, in that magnificent hangar. Uh, but everywhere people gathered, Tracy was always there. And uh, a lot of times they were aviation events uh, that celebrated uh, our industry, celebrated each other. A lot of times they were about building our industry. 
And sometimes they were just about hard work. And I remember showing up for uh, the Citation Special Olympics uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska, and kind of looking around and uh, they're Tracy and Ray. And they're just ready to welcome people, lift luggage, do whatever it needed. And uh, they were so excited and so passionate. You know, it, it's one thing to show up uh, at fancy events and, and see uh, fancy people. Another to show up uh, at Special Olympics, uh, fly people, lift lift luggage, and just help out. And, and I think that's what I'm going to remember most is uh, he was always there, uh, good times and bad, um, fancy or not so fancy, whatever it was, he embraced it, he loved it, uh, and his positivity was, uh, was just something that we all built on. Uh, Tracy always asked me what I was doing for fun. Uh, that mattered to him, uh, and, uh, and it just it permeates everything. So listen to everybody talk. Uh, I'm just reminded how blessed we are in aviation to have so many special people. And uh, uh, Tracy uh, is certainly uh, a prime example of what makes the industry so special, the, the passion and uh, the giving back and, uh, and the fun. So Vince, thank you for bringing us all together to celebrate a life very well lived. Thank you, Ed. Thank you for part participating in it. Rich Pickett, you have uh, spent a lot of time with Tracy, and I saw you smiling about several of the uh, what I call <laughs> Tracyisms. <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit some of the stories and memories you have? Yeah, I mean it's just so. Cyrus was talking about he took him under his wing. I mean, if you think of Tracy, he has huge wings. Um, no matter <clears throat> no matter what he was doing, I remember just first meeting him down at his hangar and walking around and seeing all the propellers, right? And the hangar that's in your background. Um, and he would, <laughs> hundreds of other people around there would go around and explain to me where he got those propellers, which are quite impressive. Um, and then we spent a lot of time together, spent a lot of time at, at conventions and events and helping Bob Hoover a lot. And, and then I think about as we're talking about, I was thinking uh, on his uh, sofa, and the sofa card at Oshkosh and the memories of being there with um, he and Ray and Jeff, everybody worked so hard to put all those events together. And like he said, the hospitality of, of Tracy was really unmatched. I mean, anybody was welcome to come by the events. He helped people, he introduced people, he helped people in such a generous way, whether it was from the, the trailers to the dinners to the, uh, to the sofa. I was looking for a video I have of my son and I on that sofa and just brought back nice, nice thoughts. And then we talked this summer after I had COVID and so forth. That was before he got sick. And the last time that I had seen Tracy, he had just gotten the nice November 1 Charlie Echo. And he was actually in San Diego. And I'm like, God, that looks like Tracy's paint job. But what's the deal with that? You know, and there was Tracy. So he was so proud of getting that number after all those years of waiting for it. And um, just all the memories, just amazing. Watching him with his car with a flamethrower out the back outside of his hangar and the events. And, and he had such a positive impact on so many people. I only knew him from the aviation aspect, uh, not the other walks of his construction and so forth, but um, he was just an amazing guy. And, and um, I'm sure he'd be extremely happy that this is how we celebrated him. Well, absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So Chick, I hear you have some stories you can't tell us and then some that you can. Take your choice. <laughs> Very true. I, I met Tracy in 1998 when I moved back to, to Orlando area. And uh, he, like uh, Mark mentioned, he got me involved in uh, a Mustang. I had a, my partner, my business partner and I had a 650 Citation and a Turbo Commander. And my business partner became ambassador in Luxembourg and told me, he said, I don't need an airplane anymore. So I said, well, we'll sell both of them and I'll buy another airplane. And so I was telling the, one of the guys that flew with me from time to time, I said, you know, I'm gonna get, I think I'm gonna get a Mustang. I said, I've flown with Tracy twice. And I said, I really like the airplane. I said, I don't think Lisa, who's my wife, I don't think Lisa's going to like that. She wants something bigger than that. I said, look, Lisa could fill up a 737, but I'm not going to buy one. 
And so I bought the airplane and then Tracy helped me out with an issue that happened at the pre-buy and uh, got me with a, with a consultant who turned it around and made the citation center pay for a problem with a, with an engine start and, and a uh, pretty expensive bill that they refused to. And this guy developed the, the graphs and the dates that I had the problem and citation center in Greensboro said, well, we're going to pay for this. We, we didn't realize that we hot started your engine during, during your pre-buy. And uh, Tracy's been my landlord for 15 years now. I'm in the, I've got two hangers at the taxiway right across from Tracy's. And so I would see him quite often. And uh, we, we flew together several times. We, uh, eight of us, uh, bought the uh, Citation 10 at the CJP auction. We, we tried to buy that four years in a row and finally bought it. And so we took off and, and traveled around the country and it had a wonderful time. Ate at some of the best places you'd ever want to meet. And uh, I saw Tracy about a week and a half ago. We'd been talking with Ray about trying to do something for him. And, and she said, look, why don't we all beat out at Tracy's hangar? Everybody bring their lunch and we'll sit down and you can spend some time with him. And so we did. And that was Sunday before last. And uh, I mean, you could, you could see the effect that surgery and the illness had on him, but he was still able to communicate and, and still, still was Tracy. And it, after we had lunch, we talked a little bit. Ray leaned over and spoke to him and she said, he's ready to go. And, you know, he, he never would stay still. Uh, he, the nurse's aide wheeled him out in, a, in like a walker with a seat on it as he's running his feet, helping her move. And, uh, I mean, I, I've got so many stories about Tracy, and he got me involved in CJP, kind of like Mark. I, I miss them, too. I went from the Mustang to CJ3. And... Uh, he got me involved with EAA, with Tom and those guys. And, and uh, he was just a wonderful ambassador for aviation. And uh, Cheryl and Tracy and I go over every year, and I've been doing it with them for eight years now, to, to Embry-Riddle to select students, both at John and Prescott, for the scholarships. And uh, I remember one time, and I'm sure Mike Herman does too, that we had a we had figured out four people we were going to give the scholarships to. And there was one young lady that seemed sharp and needed help. And Tracy, after she left, Tracy said, how about you and I, and I'll get Mike Herman and we'll pitch in $5,000 each and give it to her to help her out, to finish out her, her education. And, and we did that. And he was all the time trying to mentor young, young pilots, help them get, the, get their training done, help them get their education finished up just a wonderful giving person. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Chick. I see that Randy has joined us. Randy, you want to share some memories with Tracy of Tracy? Randy, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Unmute. You need to unmute. Hit your unmute and you'll be, we can hear you. Okay, while we're while we're waiting for for Randy, there he goes, Randy. Yeah, sorry. Uh, oh, that's it's okay. A, it's a it's a new uh, device, and uh, apologies for that. <clears throat> uh, you, you know, I don't. I haven't known Tracy as long as most of the people on the call, but I developed a deep sense of respect and love for him the seven or eight years that I knew him. Uh, he helped me. I, I met him uh, very briefly when I was flying a TBM, but never got to know him. And it was, he introduced me to Oshkosh, uh, staying on uh, in, in the camp there, helped me find my way around uh, long, long after most of you had, uh, had been doing that for years. But his generosity just was overwhelming. Uh, I felt like family, and uh, I, know, uh, I, I know that's how he made all of us feel. His hospitality, his hangar, again, you know, whether you're there with NBAA or CJP or uh, AOPA, I mean, it just didn't matter. You were, you were part of the inner crowd. And uh, 
I think he touches lives. He, I'm certainly, he's made me think about uh, how, we, uh, how we spend our time and money. And he's gold standard. Uh, I'm a better person the short time that I knew him and loved him. And uh, I will miss him sorely. So, uh, but again, not, not nearly the uh, length of time that m most of you have, have known him, but uh, what, a, what a class act. What's your fondest memory or story of him, Randy? Yeah, there were there were many. I, I mean, I, I flew with Tracy and his Mustang uh, up front once, and like, I mean, I was I was in a CJ one plus at the time, and I I didn't know the the Mustang well, but we were flying in and out of grass fields, and I'm and I'm thinking this is nuts. No nobody nobody takes these airplanes in and out of grass fields. But Tracy was so comfortable with it. He was so, um, he knew his airplane very well and he knew those grass strips very well. But that's just one tiny, tiny thing. And then later you, you, you get to know him much deeper and, and you see the generosity that he offers students. Uh, St. Jude's Hospital, certainly the EAA. And I, I mean, I'm blown away by this giant, this giant amongst us. Thank you. Thank you for, so much for sharing that. We have a couple of people that have joined our fireside chat. Uh, Rhonda, Rhonda Lawrence, welcome from Boeing Jet. Thanks, welcome. Good to see everybody. Good Rhonda, to see you. You, 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 wanted to, you want to say a few things about Tracy? Um, sure. Um, so, you know, all of you guys talk about you know, going up and going flying with Tracy. So um, I never, I never became a pilot. I tried, didn't work out very well for me, but um, been in the industry, as most of you know, I've been in the industry for a long, long time. And I had the great fortune of meeting Tracy um, as part of the gathering committee. And um, what I saw from Tracy was just his abundance of generosity that he constantly gave to the um, aviation industry. And it was all the time. Um, he was very quiet about it. He was very humble about it. But those of us that worked with him, and I know all of you as well, um, knew Tracy contributed a lot. And even though um, I am not a pilot, but I'm in the industry, Tracy never saw me different from anybody else. And so, you know, from that, um, I just I just love him. Every time I would see him, I'd hug him, give him a kiss. We would talk, um, just cherished all the times um, that we were able to work together on the committee. And um, also just, he always had a generous hand um, in extending invitation and inviting you to different things, whether it's to his place in Orlando or to um, his campsite at Oshkosh, um, I will cherish him dearly. Thank you very much, Rhonda. Lucino, how are you? Hey, Vince, uh, I'm doing great. I, I was here from the beginning. I was having some technical issues, so uh, thank you for doing this. Yeah, no problem. I, I know that you and Tracy have been friends and colleague, aviation colleagues. He was heavily involved uh, with Embry Riddle, as, as are you and were you, so. Uh, I thought maybe you'd want to share a few things about that yeah, relationship. And, and actually, because Tom was on the call, I, I I'm, have to tell a story. When uh, you folks at CJP hired Tom uh, to sort of expand the convention, and at the time, Tom was on my board when I was CEO of JSSI, and Tom's a pretty good salesman, and he sold me a $100,000 sponsorship package for the CJP convention. And I took a little flack with the board because we, we probably the one engine type we don't do very well in is the Williams engines, which powers most CJs. So, but the point is we, we uh, Tom immediately introduced me to Tracy and uh, we did a focus group at, uh, at, at Oshkosh and uh, Tracy just, um, uh, you know, just sort of led the thing. He brought people in and he absolutely went out of his way to make sure that um, our company was, we got our money's worth with CJP 
And I went out that year myself and I worked the show at Coeur d'Alene. Cheryl, I think you remember that. Oh, yes. And, and <laughs> <laughs> that's when I got to know Tracy. And he just, he really, really took care of us. And I think one of the best flights I ever had was nonstop after Bob Hoover service, Van Nuys to Daytona late at night, five hours and 10 minutes. And uh, I was in the right seat. And uh, both of us made a mad dash for the men's room at Shelter that evening. But <laughs> I had a chance to fly back from many Wright brothers dinners uh, in, in Washington, D.C. We attended together yeah. and, um, uh, you know, enjoyed working with them at, um, at, at Embry-Riddle on the scholarships. Just somebody I'll always remember. Yeah, thank you, Lou. You know, uh, we, we have uh, about 10 minutes left, and I wanted to give everybody a chance to, to make one, um, you know, final statement, so to speak, about their feelings about Tracy. Um, for me, he, he was, you know, somebody that I enjoyed meeting from the very beginning, 12 years ago. Um, and, and I considered him a very loyal and trusting friend. I mean, he was the type that you know, I went from AOPA to MBAA and I said, hey, Tracy, I'm over at MBAA now. And he's like, what do you got over there? And I tell him and he'd say, okay, I'll join that. Uh, and he supported, you know, every since. And he, he did that at, at, at AOPA and he did it at MBAA. And as you all know, uh, his humanitarian and, and philanthropy uh, goes far and wide. So um, I'm just appreciative of having to get to know him. I would like to him, for him to have been around longer. I'll, I'll go to you, Cheryl, first. Or actually, go ahead, Cheryl. No, no, go ahead, keep going. No, no I was gonna go to Mike and then go around the room. Okay. A, a quickie, I, we, we talked about, about, about the pranks that he would pull, and since we, we all feel the same way about him, and we all loved him very deeply. Um, at NBAA one, one year, he bought me a present uh, at, for the, at the charity for NBAA, which was the turbine blade, the really big, you know, <laughs> beautiful braid and then um he had my number and he bought it with my number <laughs> in other words i bought my own present <laughs> <laughs> oh god i forgot about that <laughs> <You did. laughs> uh, no, uh, oh my god he, he will be in all our hearts uh and and <laughs> flying along with us for a long long time because we all got the same when i listened to everybody talking we all got the same thing out of tracy he was he was a real human being and, and just, and we'll all, we'll all feel that way. You know, we all feel that way. Absolutely. Okay, Cheryl. Oh, Tracy was a, a great mentor. Um, he'd love to mentor folks. He'd love to mentor youth. There's one thing that, that I deeply regret is that I always wanted to do is at least spend one day just shadowing Tracy because he could do and get so much done in one day than any person that, or any army I have ever seen. It, it was absolutely amazing. I did have the privilege of seeing him very briefly for two times during his illness. Um, and uh, one, the first time was about a week after his surgery and uh, he cracked jokes, sat with his laptop in his lap doing work just like Tracy always did. And we just chatted for a few minutes and then he moved on to his staff and uh, just, he had things to do. He just simply had things to do. So it was great to see him that way. He was, as, as Chick said, um, he, his, his mind was there throughout that period of time. He was thinking, he was cognizant and it was just, you know, he was, he was larger than life. Yeah, speaking of always working, Tracy used to send me emails from the jet while he was at cruising altitude. <laughs> yes. I was like, really, you're following up now? <laughs> so, um, Chick, you wanna say anything else as we start to wrap this up? Sure, to kind of follow up on what Mike Herman just said, about 10 years ago at the gathering in Oshkosh, we uh, got ready to leave the dinner and Ray says, uh, you're gonna stop by and pay for your winnings? <laughs> I said, I didn't bid on anything, or I did bid, but I didn't get anything. And she said, you might want to check. And Tracy did the same thing with me. I bought a, I bought a polished propeller blade off of a King Air <laughs> and uh, hooked it up, 1500 bucks, <laughs> took it home. My wife said, what are you going to do with that? I said, I have no idea. I don't know where I'm going to put it. But uh, 
he he loved playing playing tricks on people and uh, thoroughly enjoyed life. It was a pleasure to be around. I've, yeah, I've missed you. Thank you, Chick. Before we finish the around the room, we have Shasta who just joined us. Shasta, are you on the other side of the world? Hi, Vince. How, how is everyone? I'm actually in Italy, and my son is asleep in the other room, but I didn't want to miss this event. Well, how about, you, you know, um, Tracy was very supportive of, you, of your around the world trip and uh, everything that you did, so you got to know him, too. You want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I actually met Tracy as a student at Embry-Riddle. Um, he was one of the very first uh, people who gave me a scholarship after hearing my story and my plans for the future. And I can't help but to get emotional um, because my very first Oshkosh was an invitation from Tracy. And he gave me my own trailer. I really felt like a, a celebrity back, you know, when I was a student at Embry-Riddle. And he just made me feel so comfortable. And he, he introduced me to pretty much everyone that I know in aviation. And um, through his support, you know, throughout the years, uh, it, it's just been so important to me as a pilot and to um, DreamSoar and all of the impact that the, we were able to have around the world. So uh, it's really great to celebrate his life here with you all today. Well, thanks for being with us and congratulations on the new baby. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Exciting mo new thing, motherhood, huh? Thank you, absolutely. Yeah, good. Hey, look at, look at it this way, an up and coming pilot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Mike, well, Shasta, Shasta hey. it's so good to see you. Um, and well, I can well, remember the lunch we had um, with, with you and Lou and, and uh, Tracy and I, do you remember your ride in the back seat of the Jeep? Oh my goodness. I, yes. How could you possibly forget something like that? You can never forget riding in any vehicle with Tracy. No. And, and one more thing I want to add, which I thought was the coolest thing. Um, I had the opportunity to fly with him from, um, Orlando to Sun and Fun. And, um, once we took off and we started to uh, come inbound to Sun and Fun, we were given a holding pattern. And the next thing I know, Tracy pulls out his cell phone, and within not even 20 seconds, we were cleared to land. And uh, I guess he had texted someone at the tower, and I just thought, wow, like this is the coolest person on earth. And it was just <laughs> the coolest. Every experience with Tracy is, it just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> Yeah, Greg. Do I see Greg Herrick? Yes, yes, indeed you do. Yes. Greg, you want to share a few things with us over well, the shoulder of Mark? Over the shoulder of Mark Baker? I don't know. You know, I did, all I can say is Tracy was a fantastic guy. I mean, I worked with him on the Young Eagles program. I worked with him on the Bob Hoover thing. Uh, he was just a fantastic person and always generous and thoughtful and. And a great guy to be around. I remember the parties at his hangar down uh, during NBAA, how fantastic that was. And he pulled out all the stops for his friends and just a fantastic person. I don't, uh, it's just a, a, a summation of all the good things that happened with him that kind of flow through my mind. And, and those are some of them. Thank you very much. It's great to see you, Greg. Clay, you. Did, did you have any closing comments? You've been sitting there patiently listening to all the great stories. Well, I uh, my clo closing comment would be that Trish was a great guy, as every, all of us know and re respect him uh, today and doing this video. I wish him a happy plight from here on. He's a great guy. Thank you very much. Rich, last but not least. <clears throat> yeah, I was just thinking about a couple of years ago when Tracy got us the three plus and he said, hey, you want to fly to Tahiti? I said, sure. So I hope he's making that flight now. Thank you. And I said last but not least, almost forgot Mark and Ed. Mark and Ed, you want to close out, please? Well, you know, I'll be thinking about Tracy every day. On, on my desk, he gave me a, a yoke for Beach 18 because it's one of my favorite airplanes I've owned. And he grabbed it off his desk one day, gave it to, to me and said, you keep this and sitting on my desk. He is a guy that I think we all have to step up our game now to see what we can do to live in those footsteps. Thanks.
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Ed? Well, I'm going to follow up exactly with, with what Mark Baker said. Mark and I actually had a chance to have dinner together last night, and we talked about Tracy and the glue uh, that he has been providing for our industry and uh, the challenge and responsibility we have uh, to make sure that uh, without Tracy here to bring us together, uh, we find ways to make sure we're all bringing each other together. Because uh, certainly we all uh, are blessed by the legacy of the friendships that he helped us find and create. And I think the best way we can honor him is to strengthen our friendships and bring more people into our community so that we continue to celebrate uh, uh, all things aviation and all things people. Amen. Very well said, and thank you for working the name of the initiative in there. <laughs> um, listen, this has been terrific. I, I really appreciate everybody that came on board, and we, we had a few that we added last minute to, as, as the list was growing, but um, great stories from everybody, and really great to just talk about how great of a guy Tracy was, how great of an aviator, how fun it was to be and hang, hang around with him and that type of thing. And he would have, I think, been right in the middle of this if he were Vince you've disappeared but uh, I just Not want to say to everybody you. let everybody let's keep Ray in our prayers and our thoughts and uh, give her strength thank you did I disappear yes sir you were okay. you your voice did. Sound oh, out. my voice did that means it's time to go. That's Tracy. He gave me a signal. He's like, okay, get out, <laughs> right. get out of my hangar. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> you guys take care. God bless Good. Tracy. Good to see you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you.